So once you've finished working on the object level using the object editor, you can also open up the mixer and there's some master effects on the stereo output including multiband dynamics. It has quite a few presets that you can experiment with as well. And there's also a dynamics limiter plugin as well. And there's also an FFT EQ filter on the output as well. So if you feel the need, you can do some extra sound sculpting on the stereo outputs. One thing it's worth noting, I'll open up ammunition again. If I click on the config page, and go down to the ceiling control, you'll notice it's set to 0.1 dB. So this is giving you a overall control of the individual tracks. So then you're avoiding any overshoots. So as you can see, the output level is nicely under control. There's one thing I've just noticed. There's a duplicate track here. Tracks three and four are the same. So I'm going to select the first track and hit delete. You'll notice that the tracks to the right automatically fill the space left by that deleted track. This is known as rippling. I still need to get rid of one of the markers, so I'm going to click on the manager and go to the marker tab. And you can see there's two of the same tracks there, so they're the markers, so I'm going to delete one of those markers. I inadvertently had two of the same tracks in the folder. Anyway, that's sorted out now. It's quite useful having this link all objects selected because when you use it, if you delete a track, if I quickly undo that, I'll show you again. If I have the normal object mode selected and I select an object and hit delete, it just leaves a gap. So I would have to manually drag the objects over to the left. I'll undo that again. But if I have the link objects mode selected, select an object, hit delete, and the gap is automatically filled. So this is rippling. So that ripple function comes in very handy. Another thing I'm going to quickly talk about is the use of sub index markers. Some of these tracks are quite long and are comprised of two sections. So I'm going to put a sub index marker in between the two sections. Let me find the right place. So that's the section where I want to put the sub index marker. I'll zoom in a bit. So by inserting a sub-index marker, it splits the track into two sections. So that's the correct place. Now click on the green S icon and it inserts the sub-index marker at the cursor position. Now open up the marker manager. Notice it's labeled S. So double click and give the marker a name. In this case, the second part of the track is called Emergence. So that will show up on the CD when it's pressed and you can quickly jump to that section if you want to hear it. So that's how to use CD sub-index markers. Before you can send the CD off to be manufactured, you need to do a few other things. So click on the CD DVD menu and open the marker CD index manager. I'll move that down to the corner there. You need to insert the ISRC code. This can be obtained from PPL in the UK or the equivalent body in other countries. This email describes how they work. So I'm going to type the ISRC code in the box here. GB for Great Britain. Registrant code, YJM. Year of reference code, which is 08 of course. And finally the designation code, which goes up from one to 10 in this case anyway. So once you've typed that in, if you click apply to all, you can then choose from a drop down list to automatically increment the ISRC by one, 10, 100 or 1000. So now when I click on the tracks, you can see the ISRC code changes incrementally. So there you go, you can see them all changing as I go down. If you want to know more about ISRC codes, there's some information on that email to the left, which may help you. There's also a telephone number there for England. If you need to know information about other countries, I suggest you search on the internet. I'm sure you'll find plenty of information about it. The next thing to do is to click on the CD text button and that opens the CD text MP3 ID editor. And there you can put the information about the individual tracks, the title, the artist, songwriter, composer, etc. And also the genre for CD text. There's also an ID for MP3s as well. Then you have to type in the name of the album and the name of the tracks with the artist, songwriter, composer, etc. Also the year it was finished or closed. 
You can also input a disk ID below that. The next thing we need to do is open the CD disk options window. This is where you put the CD title and also input the barcode information. This is important. You have a choice of two types of barcode, a UPC which is a USA barcode and an EAN which is a European barcode. These are normally supplied by the CD manufacturer unless of course you're an established record company and then you'll have your own barcodes. Again there's plenty of information on the internet about barcodes. So that's all the paperwork out of the way so now I'm going to take you through the CD burning process. Click on the make CD icon. I'm going to select generate a complete new file for the whole CD, non-destructive. So I'll click there. Next thing is to click where it says dithering. And if your files are anything other than 16-bit, you need to select a dithering algorithm. I'm going to choose PAL R number one. Smart dithering makes sure you don't get double dithering. I guess that happens when you get older anyway. So click OK and go back to make CD. Click on show table of contents and make sure you have show pauses, track flags, ISRC, sub index position for tracks, all enabled. So all this information will be written to the CD. Also units of measurement, of course, CD MSF. So now finally, click on burn CD. Select the folder where you want to render the file and name the CD. Click OK and let the bounce begin. I've edited the video to make this a bit faster. So anyway, it's getting to 99, 100. So there you go. So now we have a wave project, 0 0.1 dB. So now I need to insert a CD into the drive. So now we have yet another window. So I'm going to make sure I select burn with CD text. And the speed is going to be eight times. And finally click right. So that's the CD finished. Press return to tile the window vertically. Now you can see the original VIP and the WAVE project together. Now that it's burnt, I'm going to go to the file menu and select load import audio CD tracks. Now we can check that all the information has been correctly written to the CD. Click down the bottom where it says read ISRC. So all the ISRC codes have been written correctly and also the barcode and the CD name and the CD artist. So everything appears to be fine. You can also click where it says text file. And if you want to, you can print out that information as well. I burnt this CD using a PlexTor CD drive and there's some software which comes with it, which is called Plex Tools. It has its own audio CD player. So I'm going to select that. Premium 2. So now I can check whether the CD text has been written correctly. So it looks like everything's fine. So this is basically what you would see if you put it into a domestic CD player, providing the CD player recognized CD text, of course, which most of them do anyway. There are also some diagnostic functions, so you can check the CD for errors. C1 and C2 errors and FE and TE errors, jitter, etc. So it's a pretty useful bit of software. So what we have done is render a WAV file and then burnt the CD from the WAV file. There is another way you can do it, which is called burning on the fly. So I'll go back to the original VIP here again. This would be more useful if you wanted to quickly burn off one CD in a hurry. So you just press the CD button. Make sure you have burn on the fly ticked. Check you have the dithering set up correctly. Click burn CD and you'll get to the recording options again. I'm going to burn it at the maximum speed this time to speed things up. Then finally click on write. So now you can see the play cursor moving along the timeline as it writes the CD in real time. So that's the writing finished 
and now you can play it immediately on your CD player. And that brings me to the end of this tutorial, so until next time, goodbye for now.